Hey everyone, happy Friday. I'm gonna do something a little different today and do my Q&A on a walk. So here we go. Someone asked, what are other sources of choline if I'm uh, intolerant to eggs? So beef liver and beef kidney and chicken liver are actually a much better source, or I shouldn't say much, but a higher source of choline. So you can get choline from that, probably not chicken liver if you're intolerant to eggs. But um, then we have cod, salmon, and yeah, those are gonna be your most potent forms of choline. So eggs kind of fall somewhere in the middle between beef and fish. Um, but yeah, hopefully that gives you other options. Chicken, eggs are definitely not your only option. How do you know if you're ready to give blood? Um, so this can be tricky, but I usually work with people you know, around six months before they're truly ready. But we have to make sure that we are um, nourishing properly. I have a post called where to start stop. So stopping those things that could potentially hurt your ceruloplasmin production. Um, if you don't know what ceruloplasmin is, check out my iron and copper uh, highlight and making sure that you're getting the nutrients that allow you to make ceruloplasmin, which include copper and vitamin A, and yeah, nourishing yourself and temps and pulses should be in a good place too. And then the only way to know is to try. And if you feel like crap after, or you know, if your hair starts falling out, then you know it was too soon. So you need to spend a little more time doing the foundations. But the only way to really know if you feel like you've been doing the foundations is to try. Thin weak nails with ridges. So this is usually nutrient deficiencies. I know that there's a whole art to reading nails, but you know, I think that we could read too much into them sometimes. Um, so this usually means nutrient deficiencies and it could be anything from like not enough protein to micronutrient deficiencies like zinc. So the white spots, um, calcium deposits, things like that. So I would wonder if you're on the birth control pill too. When I was, my nails were so, so, so weak. I could not keep a manicure. They would break or like bend. And also when I had um, my autoimmune skin condition on the birth control pill, my nails got even weirder. They got like really weird deep ridges, really big ones. They looked like waves, ocean waves. It was really weird. So if you think it's like something super out of the ordinary, maybe go ch get checked out, but otherwise you might just need more food. So hard to say. Is postpartum hair loss unavoidable? Uh, and yeah, pretty much. Um, but you know, there's definitely things that can make it worse. Our hair goes through a growth cycle. And when we're pregnant, the cycle stops and restarts when our hormones drop once we give birth. So um, we can lose a lot of hair. And, uh, but what can make it worse is if we're nutrient deficient. So how are we nourishing ourselves while we're pregnant? How are we nourishing ourselves now that we're postpartum? and really reducing the amount of stress because there's a lot that has to do with hair. We need macronutrients, micronutrients. And so if we're not hitting all of these things, it can lead to hair loss because hair is expendable in our body. If it doesn't feel safe enough, it's not gonna feel like it has the ability to expend energy on it. So making sure that you're fueling yourself can help mitigate excessive hair loss, but Generally speaking, some postpartum hair loss is gonna happen no matter what. So I hope this helps. Have you ever heard of alpha-gal beef pork intolerance due to tick bite? So I have heard of it. I haven't researched it like extensively, but from what I understand the tick bite, uh, post tick bite, we become allergic or intolerant to alpha-gal, which is a sugar that's in red meat. So. I don't know exactly what you're looking for in terms of the question, but um, you can still get uh, protein from non-red meat sources like chicken and fish. Um, and I think venison as well, like a leaner red meat doesn't produce as much of a reaction. So you can still get some pretty good protein sources if you do this. And you can always look for chicken bone broth instead of like beef bone broth and that kind of stuff. So hope it, hopefully this helps. I love tuna and eat it at least once a week, but now I'm scared to eat it because of hoofas. What are your thoughts? Um, so I don't worry about eating fish. I'm not scared of it. 
they're a great source of minerals and vitamins. The fats inside them do rancidify to some extent, but the antioxidants and the nutrients that they provide far outweigh the sort of downside to, you know, the polyunsaturated fats. So um, I would say, don't be scared. Their poofas are in everything. It's just a matter of like how much. So I would definitely take eating seafood over taking fish oil, for example. <laughs> but really up to you and what you like. I get sushi like every other week, sometimes every week. <laughs> so, and I, I love tuna. That's my favorite fish to get for sushi. So I would say like, really don't worry about it. Remedies to act like albuterol for asthma. I've heard of uh, nebulizing colloidal silver, but not sure. Um, so I'm not a fan of colloidal silver. I much would much prefer something like nebulizing, nebulizing magnesium instead. I would also look into nettle tea. That really helps with my asthma. So check out those two. They're really great, sort of like herbal and holistic options for asthma. Best vitamin K2 supplement, what to look out for when buying one, and when is the best time to take it. Uh, so best vitamin K2 supplement, I haven't found one better than Mitolife or Thorns Drops. Uh, I really like those. What to look out for, make sure it has MK4 and MK7, not just one of each, and make sure it's, if you're getting a K complex, make sure it's a K complex, <laughs> not just K1. Um, and then make sure it doesn't have vitamin D added to it. For some reason, folks think that we must have vitamin D with K. That is simply not true. Um, and then best time to take it, uh, usually with food, a meal. So I hope that helps. Best recommendations for someone with OCD and anxiety other than therapy, thanks. Um, so yeah, I mean, from a nutritional standpoint, uh, copper deficiency is actually associated with both. So you may need minerals, but more specifically some copper. So I'd make sure you're getting copper rich foods like beef liver and uh, what else? I'm having a brain fart. Um, oysters, uh, vitamin C rich foods, shellfish, and make sure you're balancing your blood sugar as well. Uh, because eating low blood sugar and stress hormones can also make us feel very, very anxious. Very anxious. So try to check those out. Always have protein and carb together. Hopefully that helps you. How to help low vitamin D with not much access to sun. So yeah, I would check out, um, definitely look into magnesium. <laughs> you may need magnesium. It's needed to synthesize vitamin D as well as activate it and check out a vitamin D lamp. Um, you may need a vitamin D lamp if you're in a not sunny place most of the year. Spurty has one and let's see what else. Make sure you're getting enough retinol as well because the conventional way of m measuring vitamin D is storage form, but you need a vitamin A, real vitamin A from animal foods to actually activate it and work for you in your immune system. So make sure you're getting all those three, I would say. Check them out and hopefully that helps you. Almost forgot, I knew I forgot something. Uh, there's vitamin D rich foods like high quality dairy, eggs, beef liver has some, uh, oily fish like mackerel, salmon, um, sardines, herring. I think those have vitamin D as well. So you could also approach it from a food angle too and make sure you're getting some of that stuff in your diet. Are desiccated oyster capsules okay to take instead of real oysters? I would say yes. <laughs> you know, everyone's different. Everyone has different access to oysters. I think desiccated oyster capsules are an excellent way to get the nutrients that oysters have to offer, like vitamin B12, iodine, zinc, selenium. Um, so if you're, especially if you're in like a landlocked state, it's really great. So I would definitely check it out. Um, I really like Mitolife's. I do have a 15% code, so never pay a full price for them. Um, it's code innate in all capital letters. And then I also like Oyster Max. I think they're from like New Zealand or the UK. I can't remember right now, but those two are my favorite. 
nipple discharge at the time of period? What could this be associated with? Um, so this is probably due to hormonal changes. Sometimes it's not a big deal, but sometimes it is. So I would actually probably go get it checked out, honestly. Is there something I can do to reduce PMS every fortnight with the IUCD? So I'm assuming it's the U IUD, maybe copper IUD? Is it the copper IUD? Because regardless of which one it is, they will both put you in an estrogen dominant state. So, I mean, doing everything in my estrogen dominance post, limiting xenoestrogens, limiting phytoestrogens as best you can, but not, you know, maniacally, um, in a healthy way, and making sure you're balancing blood sugar and getting the nutrients like glycine, B vitamins to help your body detoxify estrogen properly. That's really the way to do it. There's no like magic supplement or anything that you can do take to rebalance those hormones. So I would think about those things and then, you know, if your symptoms persist and they're really causing you a lot of life stress, it's really diminishing your quality of life and maybe it's worth a chat with your doctor to see what other options might work for you. My personal favorite is the fertility awareness method. So go check out Tony Weschler's book called Taking Charge of Your Fertility. It's an excellent intro to that. Inexpensive ways to boost fertility for men and women. So yeah, there's tons of ways. Um, <laughs> the freest ones, get enough sleep, sleep well. Um, you can also get some sunlight every day, specifically in the morning too. Getting sunlight in your eyes in the morning will trigger the cortisol awakening response, which actually sets your immune system. Um, let's see, balancing your blood sugar, regardless of what you're eating. So making sure you're having a protein and carb together, um, hydrating properly, eating enough salt. That's usually pretty inexpensive. Um, it doesn't have to be, like fertility journey doesn't have to be loaded up with supplements day to day. It can be eat, just eating as nutritious as you can possibly get, balancing your blood sugar, getting enough minerals, and getting enough sleep and sunlight, honestly. Ovulation tracker recommendation. I've never tracked my ovulation and have no idea when I ovulate. Yeah, so trackers are helpful in that like they can help you put your info in and kind of predict when you're gonna ovulate, but you really won't know unless you know your body. So I would, I would actually check out, like I mentioned earlier, Taking Charge of Your Fertility by Tony Weschler. There are three biomarkers that you can use. Uh, temperature, um, cervical mucus, and then cervical, cervix height. And those are kind of the best predictors of fertility and ovulation. Um, so that said, I do really like apps like Flow, apps like Clue, um, even the Ava bracelet, I kind of really like that because then you don't have to wake up uh, at the same time or around the same time every day to take your temperature. <laughs> so there's also the Daisy, but again, those things are all going to predict ovulation, but you need to confirm your ovulation yourself. So um, in my course the pre with the preconception PT coming out, we're going to have a whole module on like how to tell when you're ovulating and figure this stuff out. Um, so if you're on your preconception journey, just know that I'm going to keep you informed about that and help educate you. So um, just something to think about. But yeah, check out that book. It's really great. I'm taking one milligram of folate. Uh, do I need to take B12 to absorb it? So no, zinc, uh, folate absorption actually depends on zinc, not uh, B12. But the ratio of B12 to folate does matter as well because B12, having too much folate versus B12 can create some imbalances and issues too with the baby. So this is why I don't recommend supplementing single supplements, especially that much. <laughs> That's quite a bit of folate. Um, but that said, that doesn't mean go uh, supplement zinc either or B12. This is why I like getting things from Whole Foods because they provide all of the cofactors and the proper partners um, in one package. So I'll be talking about this more in the preconception course coming out soon. Um, but just a few things to think about, I guess, with your folate supplementation that you might want to research more. Is ricin and castor oil, can castor oil hurt you? 
Um, so yeah, ricin is in the plant that castor oil is extracted from, but in the extraction process, this toxin is neutralized. So it's not something you need to worry about if you're buying castor oil. But yeah, I mean, castor oil, I, I personally wouldn't take it internally, but it's great for external use. Is donating plasma bad for health? I read somewhere that it was. Um, so if we're trying to get rid of iron, plasma is not going to do it. <laughs> um, we need to donate whole blood because donating just plasma is not going to get rid of any excess iron. It's just getting rid of um, some minerals, so which your body needs to handle the iron. So I would say I... In, from an iron overload aspect, plasma is not helpful and it can actually be harmful in that regard and then it probably leaves you more depleted and it's not actually helping you get rid of iron. So hope that helps. Okay guys, that's all I have time for today. Thanks for watching. Um, just a quick note, I get a lot of the same questions that I do, that I've already answered um, this time. So I highly suggest going back through my old Q&As on my IGTV to watch because you might find some of the answers that I didn't get to, some of the answers to the questions that I didn't get to. Um, but yeah, I hope you have a wonderful weekend and until next week.